Before we get into today's video, it's come to my attention that YouTube has not been sending notifications out to some of you who have clicked the notifications bell. To remedy this, I've set up a new mailing list that will send out a weekly update for all SciGet content, so you never have to miss a beat. Check the link in the description and comments to sign up, and be sure to check your spam folder or promotions tab to confirm your email address. The search has been on to find the first ever exomoon, a moon that exists outside of our solar system. As you can imagine, with the limitations of the tools we have now to observe exoplanets, finding an exomoon has been more than a little difficult. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't exist, but it does mean that we would need to upgrade our technology and techniques for finding these objects in the future. And it looks like not only have we found one, but we found one forming around a gas giant that is also still forming. Before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, drop me a sub, and ring the bell. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is ScienceGet. For longtime viewers of the channel, this image should be familiar. It was the first image of a sun-like star and two giant exoplanets around it. Taken by the Very Large Telescope in Chile, this is not only a monumental image, but it also illustrates something about our technological limits, too. In 1992, while trying to observe a pulsar, Alexander Wolskin found that his view of the stellar object was blocked. This intrigued him, and eventually he would discover the reason for this interference. There were actually two planets in orbit around the pulsar. Yeah. That means that the first ever exoplanets discovered were actually orbiting a freaking pulsar. That's awesome. Although you probably wouldn't want to travel to these planets as they are constantly bombarded by gamma and x-ray radiation. While the existence of planets outside our solar system had been long theorized, no one had ever discovered one orbiting an alien star before. This meant that there were other alien worlds waiting to be found by eager astronomers. Since that discovery, we've utilized a few methods for capturing data on exoplanets. The first is radial velocity. A star that has a planet orbiting it will move in its own small orbit in response to the planet's gravitational pull. We see this with our own star, as well as systems like the Earth and the Moon in Pluto and Charon. This is called a barycenter, which is the center of mass between two objects in orbit. This leads to variations in the speed of the star as it moves toward and away from the Earth. The way we can tell this is due to the Doppler effect. No, computer, not that one. You've actually encountered the Doppler effect. This is the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the same wave source. It's named after the famed Austrian physicist Christian Doppler, who observed and described the phenomenon in 1942. Modern spectrometers can detect variations in velocity up to 3 meters per second in a star, which is great, because planets like Jupiter and Earth cause variations in our sun's velocity of 13 meters per second and 9 meters per second. Some spectrometers are even able to detect variations even less than 3 meters per second, which is a huge deal when you think about how far away most of these exoplanets are, the closest being in the Proxima Centauri system. Transit photometry, or the transit method, is very different from the radial velocity method, however. The photometric method uses observations of a star's light to determine an exoplanet's radius. Much like when Venus transits the Sun's surface based on our relative position, this transit causes the light observed from the Sun to dramatically decrease. Similarly, when we observe dips in light from other stars, we know that something, probably a planet, is passing in front of that star. However, very few photographs exist from alien star systems, and the ones that we do have are only of larger planets around the size of Saturn and Jupiter. The trouble with finding exomoons is that they're just too small to detect with our current technology. Until now, that is. The Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in Chile is at it again, imaging a dusty disk of material forming around an exoplanet that some astronomers think may be one of those elusive exomoons. A circumplanetary disk is defined as a torus, ring, or pancake-shaped accumulation of gas, dust, planetesimals, asteroids, or collision fragments that orbit around a still-forming protoplanet. The system in question is 370 light-years away from us, and the world that has been photographed is about the size of Jupiter. Researchers suggest that there is enough material revolving around the exoplanet to make up 2.5 Earth moons, which doesn't sound like much considering that Jupiter has upwards of 13 moons. But remember that our moon is actually one of the largest moons in our system, though Ganymede and Titan are much bigger than it. 
Observations of this system could offer new insights into how exoplanets and exomoons form around young alien stars. There are actually two planets orbiting this star named PDS-70b and PDS-70c. In July of 2019, they were observed in a protoplanetary disk, absorbing dust and gas from the disk as they orbited the young star. During this process, forming planets wrap themselves in their own debris disks, called circumplanetary disks, which control how they are able to layer on matter and even form moons. But how do we know that this image represents a moon forming around a Jovian-class planet? In recent surveys, it's been almost unanimously observed that protoplanetary disks have ring-like structures and gaps. Now obviously, these are usually interpreted as planets forming from within the disk. Some of these exoplanets have been found using the infrared spectrum, and others have been observed in the H-alpha range. You know what infrared is, but H-alpha is another powerful tool for astronomers. It has a wavelength of 656.281 nanometers, is visible in the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it's the easiest method for astronomers to trace ionized hydrogen content out of gas clouds. But despite finding a few strong candidates, the mission to observe protoplanets within these planet-forming clouds has been extremely challenging for the scientific community. Now, this is not the first time that an exoplanet has been reported having a potential exomoon. Back in 2019, two very different results were reported from two different groups of researchers observing Kepler-1625. One involved dips in the star's wavelength that seemed to suggest that an exomoon was present, but the other group reported nothing resembling what might be an exomoon at all. But unlike most exoplanets that have been observed thus far, PDS-70b and PDS-70c are still forming. Around PDS-70c, ALMA was able to image a disk of dust that is about as wide as the Earth's orbit around its star, about 1.2 AU according to the accompanying paper, suggesting that a moon is forming along with it as it transits the star. Believe it or not, PDS-70 was the first system where we found strong evidence for planets embedded in a protoplanetary disk. Ironic then that it may also be the system that allows us to observe a forming exomoon too isn't it? Unlike its sister planet, PDS-70b doesn't appear to have a moon-forming disk. This may be because it has a much narrower orbit than 70c, which is nearly as far from its star as Pluto and Charon are from our star. PDS-70c, by comparison, is much closer to an outer disk of debris surrounding the parent star. Study co-author Jehan Bey, an astrophysicist at the Carnegie Institution for Science in Washington, D.C., says, PDS-70C is getting all the material from the outer disk, and B is getting starved. In the past, PDS-70B must have gotten some material in its disk, and it could have already formed moons. The resolutions we're observing these two exoplanets at are around 67 mass by 50 mass. The resolution mass corresponds to mass spectrometry, and it represents our ability to distinguish two peaks of slightly different mass-to-charge ratios in a mass spectrum. A larger resolution indicates a better separation of peaks. These images show that there is evidence for submillimeter continuum emission that corresponds to PDS-70C. The emissions around PDS-70C were not, as the paper describes, spectrally separated from the outer ring. With some images at 20 mass, ALMA was able to provide an independent detection of a compact source of emissions very, very close to PDS-70C. After a very complex process and using extremely high resolutions equal to about 40 mass, these images show what the paper accompanying the study calls substructures, and these are the reasons why we think that moons are forming around PDS-70C. At this resolution, the forming planet is clearly separated from the protoplanetary disk, and there is a clear disk of material surrounding the planet. Yes, these few specks are the best evidence we have for the existence of forming exomoons in an alien star system. I just want to sit here and admire the significance of these images and let that sink in. At one point, our solar system's planets and its moons went through a similar process of formation, and probably would have looked very similar to this set of images if another civilization were to observe it using these tools. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below what you think of the first ever exomoons potentially being observed around an alien star. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and be sure to check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.